Now let's talk about a modular I.O. So um, with modular I.O. they are more flexible than the fixed I.O. units. You have various types of inputs and output modules and, and they're all housed in one rack or chassis. Um, when you have local I.O. the mounts are mounted with the processor and the remote I.O. Uh, processor is mounted remotely from the I.O and the racks must be configured. So when you get a modular uh, setup, you have to pick your processor, everything's separate, so you gotta pick your processor, pick your power supply, and then you have to select all your I.O. Well, all those inputs and output cards that you select to make it all in a rack, when we talk a rack, that's the whole assembly, okay? Um, you have to pick each of those and everything is separate and has to be assembled together. But at the same time, uh, when I say together, I mean we could have a processor and then across the plant we could have the I.O. and it's talking to it through Ethernet. So not everything has to be in one spot, but when you do do a modular system, you have to select everything separately. So like I said, the processor comes separate, then you get the power supply, and then you have um, all your I.O. that you have to select to go with it. All right, so let's talk about more about the discrete I.O. So we talked earlier, discrete means on or off, right? So they only accept a digital on-off signal. The module will determine the state of the real-world device and communicate the state to the processor. If the device is off and wired normally open, off or zero is stored in the processor's memory. All right, so say we have a push button, a start push button wired normally open, and if it's not pushed, okay, it's off so it stores as a zero in the process of memory. But if we push that button and it goes high to a one, it's then stored in the processor's memory as a high, okay? Uh, the discrete I.O., there's a, a wide variety of ranges of voltages, um, 120, 240, VAC, 24 volts, 12 volts, etc. So if we kind of look at this, I got a drawing showing here. It's a discrete input module. Uh, PLC input cards rarely supply power. This means that an external power supply is needed to supply power for the input of the sensors. So the onboard power supply on a PLC, there ain't much there. So you'll basically run a couple lights if you'd like to do that. But otherwise you need to have an external power supply. So this drawing shows that there's an external power supply of uh, 24 volts um, AC <laughs> power supply and it's wired to the normally open push button and then the push button on the other side goes to the input card, the PLC input card 24 volts AC located on a zero one spot and the other uh, component here that's wired is a normally open temperature sw switch which is um, going to a uh, input three on the PLC card. All right, so um, also at the bottom here, it shows so a little bit of ladder logic showing an examine of close addressed. You can say I colon zero slash 13 is the address for an at slot or pin one is the push button address. So this card it tells me is in slot 13 and pin one is where the push button is wired, hardwired to. And the temperature switch is on the same slot, so slot 13 and I for input, slot 13 and slash 3 is pin 3. So that is the a convention of how to address those cards. Discrete input or discrete output modules. Uh, as with input modules, output modules rarely supply any power, but instead act as a switch. External power supplies are connected to the output card, and the card switches all the power on or off for each output. Typical output voltages are 120 VAC, 24 volts, 12 to 48, all kinds of stuff there. Uh, common choices of output cards are relays, transistors, and triacs. Relays, relays are the most flexible and capable of switching both AC and DC outputs. So you can see why they're favorable, because they can go either way. Uh, but they are slower, um, bulkier, cost more, and will wear out faster, because there's actual uh, mechanical um, switching there. Relay outputs, dry contacts, is a separate relay that is dedicated to each of the following mixed voltages. 
Uh, transistors are limited to DC outputs, right? Transistors, DC, and triacs are limited to AC outputs. Transistors and triacs are switched outputs. Uh, the voltage is supplied to the PLC card and the card switches it to different outputs using solid state circuitry, okay? And transistor outputs use NPN or PNP transistors. So here's a, uh, a drawing, an electrical drawing of an output module. We can see we have the 24 volt DC output card and uh, wired to pin 3. We have a relay and that relay, when this coil becomes energized because this output came on in the PLC, it will um, pull this contact close and supply power to the motor. Okay. Down here we have a lamp, uh, same thing. The seven, pin seven is wired to the lamp and um, to complete the circuit it needs to have uh, the seven on here. So, And also down here we have the graphical representation and the ladder logic. Uh, o for output, colon zero twelve, so slot twelve must be where this card is located, slash pin three. Okay, and same thing, O for output. 12 slash 7 is for the lamp. This is an example of a syncing 24 volt PC output card. Sorry. Um, sourcing and syncing modules. If a device provides current, it is sourcing. If a device receives current, it is syncing. Contact output modules. Electromechanical mechanical relay used to open or close a set of contacts. Each set of contacts are isolated and can be normally open or normally closed. And then you also have the interposing relay used to control loads larger than current rated of an individual output circuit. All right, analog I.O. modules. Analog input modules used to convert analog signals to an integer value, okay? So when you say analog, or well, when I say analog, I'm talking to you and saying that, hey, you get a signal and it's like real life because you get a range of values. It still is digital, but instead of being on or off, it's going to give a higher resolution. So you may have, you know, eight bits of data telling you where that temperature range is instead of one or 16 bits or 32 bits, depending on how, you know, how um, tuned you want it to be or how high a resolution you want it to be. So even though it's analog, it still is a digital signal. And um, in the same with, so with our inputs, that's how it takes it in. And the same with the output modules as well. It will say for um, starters or sending a signal to a motor for speed control or um, opening and closing, say, a gate that needs to be at several different intervals or, you know, uh, to increase or decrease, say, a flow of some water. Same thing, they're going to be uh, use a higher resolution as the output signal to determine those heights instead of just, you know, on or off. So also when we're thinking about I.O., I talked to you about safety circuits. Um, we, uh, we got hardwired emergency stops we have to consider coming into our I.O. You want to make sure it removes powers from the output to the output devices that move and can hurt you. You want to make sure they're independent of the PLC program uh, required by NEMA standards when the operator is exposed to machinery. Uh, emergency stop relay contact and use for a system restart. All right. Um, consideration for your rack and installations. Factors to consider: temperature, dust, vibration, humidity, wiring distances accessibility for troubleshooting. So those are all things you need to consider where, when you're putting in this rack with all this I.O. and the PLC on it. All right, so next let's talk about the processor unit, what it does. So um, the processor unit itself consists of a microprocessor, memory chip, circuits necessary to store and retrieve information and from memory and communication circuits. It can be self-contained unit or be modular and plug in directly into the I.O. rack or at a remote location. So with our fixed and our modular, like I kind of went over before, our processor is either right beside it or could be at a, uh, a distant location. Okay? The microprocessor is a device that monitors status of input devices. Okay? It systematically stall, solves the logic of the user program, controls states of the output devices, communicates with other devices, and uh, manages memories and updates timers, counters, and 
internal registers.